What is going on, everyone? Mitch Jackson, along with my special guest this evening, Mr. Brian Fanzo. This is Wednesday night, LegalMarketing.Live. How's everyone doing? We're going to jump right into the show, and we're going to knock your socks off tonight. When it comes to making an impact, when it comes to learning how to close a deal using Zoom, live video, or a virtual presentation, you're at the right place. It's the right time. Let me introduce Mr. Brian Fanzo. Brian's a page wearing millennial, a translator of geek speak, podcast host and keynote speaker who's shifting generational perspectives on marketing, social media, innovation, embracing change and collaboration. Early in his career, he worked for the Department of Defense, I think like nine years, where he managed a global team who deployed collaboration and cybersecurity solutions around the world. Today, Brian's the founder of iSocial Fans, which has helped launch digital and influencer strategies with the world's most iconic brands like Dell, EMC, Adobe, IBM, the UFC, Applebee's, and SAP. Brian's been recognized as a top 20 digital transformer, excuse me, as a top 20 digital transformation influencer, and there is a difference, a top 50 most mentioned user by CMOs on Twitter, and a top 25 social business leader of the future by The Economist. His followers on social media and podcast downloads rank in the hundreds of thousands and it's resulted in Brian being an influencer for 19 of the Fortune 100 comp companies. Today, we're going to talk about virtual presentations, and today I would like to welcome Brian Fanzo to the show. How are you doing, sir? It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Top of the evening. Hope everything is going well. I like that intro. Very nicely done. Well, you know what? Let me toast you. Here you go, my yes. friend. It's good to see you. And Cheers. it's five o'clock someplace, especially here in California. Let's get the. Uh... Yeah, it's five o'clock there. It's eight o'clock here. We're, we're long overdue here on the in D.C. area. But that's what I like about this show is because it's it's at a point in time where everyone's done with their day. It's hump day. Some, everyone's looking for something different. And right now, Brian, with everything going on in the world, I'll tell you right now, all the lawyers in my life, we all appreciate the power of live video, of virtual presentations. And that's why. I wanted to get you on tonight, okay? And also, let me just first encourage everyone, share this out. We're on most of the top platforms. Ask your questions. Jump over to MitchJackson.Live, which is the Facebook page where most of the engagement's happening. I'll bring your questions on, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and just dive right in. Brian, right off the bat, talk to us a little bit about virtual presentations, why is it so damn important right now? And what's our mindset? What do we need to know to make things happen? You know, it's funny, you know, we were talking uh, kind of pre-show here a little bit on, you know, for me for the last five years, my goal has been to get brands, leaders and associations to understand the synergy between digital and humanity, right? Like how do we connect the dot between digital and humanity? And it's not about online versus offline. What you do online does not replace what you do offline. But thanks to you know COVID-19, we've been forced into this new, it's not even a new normal, we've been forced into this idea where we're isolated, we're limited in so many different ways. But you know, there's there's part of me that says, imagine if this had happened 10 years ago, right? Like no social media, no video collaboration tools. I mean, we feel lonely and isolated and disconnected um, now. You know, I, I haven't talked to an no. adult human um, in person uh, since March 11th. Like I've been quarantined. I have my daughters, um, you know, 10, 8, and 6. But I mean, other than my daughters, I've literally have not talked to a single uh, person um, in person, right? I, you know, go to the grocery store a couple times. But, you know, I've done how many virtual calls, how many things. And so, the thing that I think is most important is it's not about taking what we do offline and putting it online. It's because what happens there is we bring the limitations of offline into this world. It's okay. How can we simulate or do things similar in the virtual space to make one better than the other or kind of go back and forth. And so for me, I think a lot of the mistakes end up happening. Like we want online to replace what we do offline, or we just take what we do offline 
do the exact same thing online and expect it to work. And let's face it, we have more choices, more distractions, more information at our disposal online than we've ever had before. So we're, I mean, it's a very interesting time. I mean, I've been preaching and praying for people to get into like, I know you have. the light. And um, now it's the other way. Like now everyone's forced to see it. Now we have to figure out how to Oops, you froze up with me, Brian. Hopefully, oh, yeah, I'm back. We okay, good? good, good. We're good. We're good. Yo, I, I, I think it's because I clicked on the chat. I saw Mr. Brian Kramer in there. I got you covered on the chat. Don't you worry about the chat. You know, <laughs> and even even more important than Brian Kramer, we got Jennifer. She's excited to hey. see you, and she's yep. putting up with me. So, Jennifer, it's good to see you. I know. I like that picture. You had the picture with your son and uh, me and Jennifer in San Diego yeah. last year. That was a really good picture. That was fun. And I think one of the important things, uh, maybe just to start things off, is how different things really are. In other words, you're used to presenting from the stage, keynoting around the world. Uh, you've got a captive audience, you're reading your audience, and you're sharing from the stage immediate feedback, right? On the spot. Like this is, you're adjusting to the feedback from your audience. Right now, like you said, with virtual presentations, there are a lot of people out there that are doing webinars, that are doing presentations, and we've got to immediately capture their, their, their attention, right? And respect their time. Talk to us a little bit about what's different about being virtual versus being on stage, and maybe we can roll into some of the tools, some of the approaches, some of the methods that you use, whether it's technology or people skills, to make this work really well for you. So, you know, I think this is a, I mean, I think you set it up pretty nicely there. You know, the the no attention span, right? Like we have more options than we've ever had before, you know, and, you know, as a lawyer, you know, when you're in the courtroom, you have captured attention. When I'm on stage, we have captured attention, even if someone has a phone or a laptop out. But in this digital world, not only do we not have captured attention, but we're, we're competing with, you know, phone notifications, Netflix, you know, you know, the 140 tabs you might have up in Chrome. And, you know, I don't look at it as kind of like content overload. I look at it as consumers. We just don't have any time for crappy content, right? And we don't want people to waste our time. We don't want people um, to, you know, not, you know, not only respect our time, but not put in the effort to gain, you know, maintain our attention. And so I think one of the biggest pieces is, you know, when you have someone's attention, what are you doing to keep it? And what are you doing to even maintain it over a long period of time, which I think is probably the hardest thing to do, you know, in today's day and age. And, you know, even your intro, right? You, you went, you know, when we, you and I have done a lot of live video together. We did we Periscope have. Summit way many, many years back where the only way to go live on these platforms was your phone. And you just did an intro with, you know, um, you know slides and video and overlay and your voiceover. Like we've come a long way in the five years of live streaming, but at the same time, well, when when this is all we were using at the time, yeah. And, you and remember when live video live, came onto a desk with that, right? Like just my phone, twenty hours. I mean, like so. I mean, like the phone was great, but like now it's one of those weird or interesting things of like now that we have all of these things at our disposal, how do we do, use them in the in the way that makes the most sense? How do we not overdo it? And then I also think, how do we take people into a virtual opportunity, right? We, we know that everyone watching this is on their phone or on their laptop, right? Like, or iPad. Um, right. So now we, 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 from an audience perspective, what does that mean to us, right? And I think that also includes like, how do we convey emotion, right? How do we move, you know, in and out? I know you're using the green screen yeah. background. I have some, uh, you know, overlays and some technology that I'll be using as well. But I think even more important than that is how do we convey our message and respect people's time. I, you know, and I and I, you and I, I think we talked about this many years ago. Was like my biggest soapbox was, you know, if you're done having something to say, or you have the audience and you've completed, the worst thing you can do is drag it on and not respect people's time, right? Because we all have 24 hours in the day. It doesn't matter how much money you make or what that solution yeah. is. So I think that's probably one of the biggest pieces is being strategic with, you know, leveraging virtual components, but when you have people's attention, make sure that you're maximizing their time and their value. And then when you're done, get out of their feed. Don't, I mean, nobody said, I want 
more email. I want more video thrown in my face, but we do want more opportunities to learn. We want more opportunities to provide value. We want more opportunities to connect with people. And so now it's a, you know, it's a matter of being, you know, strategic while at the same time, you know, testing out a lot of the things that we have going on right now. And Brian, uh, one of the comments that came in, Benjamin Sanchez talked about uh, getting ready for a CLE presentation and he's excited about this topic. And, you know, what I want to do is I want to give lawyers and other professionals watching tonight's show um, tools and solutions so they can do what I did at the beginning of tonight's show. And we're using StreamYard, you guys, to broadcast out to Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook groups, YouTube, all at once with one click. Okay. Now, Brian's the tech expert. Okay. He knows how to do all this stuff. I just clicked a couple of buttons and I was able to make this happen. The intro tonight was just a short video where I clicked a button and it came up. Okay. Uh, before I introduced Brian. And then another one while I was introducing Brian, it wasn't hard, Brian, for me to do this. And if I can do it, Everyone watching can do it, but it's those little things that I think immediately captures the attention of our audience, right? And then once we capture the attention of our audience, then we have to provide value and do so in a certain way. Well, and I would argue, you know, like I know that you say, you know, it's easy for you, but how many live streams would you say you've done? I, I've watched you live stream running on the beach, coming out of the courtroom, right? In the office with your kids on the you know sporting i mean how many live streams have you done you know, so you, hundreds hundreds, hundreds but overcome, this makes right? it simple this makes it simple right but i but i think part of that too is right so for me one of the big steps i think we're overlooking is the confidence and ability to deliver on video right video is intimidating it's scary no one likes watching themselves on video we are the hardest critiquer of our own thing on video um it's why my mantra is press the damn button right like I would get so frustrated where people, I, I would inspire them to, to embrace video and they would leave my session. You know, a month later, they would go to go live and like, oh, my hair wasn't right or I didn't have the right gear. And then a year later, they would come to my event and they would say, Brian, I took all these notes. You inspired me. You motivated me. Hopefully this year I'm going to go live. And I got so frustrated. I was like, just please press the damn button. And so I, I think one of the things that like is important to kind of put out there is a lot of these tools are making it easier for us to do a lot of these cool things. But the, the hardest part is getting comfortable on video, getting natural. You know, I watched you, um, you know, being interviewed on Jennifer's show um, just on Wednesday, right? Like alone this week, we've probably done four or five live streams. And so for those that are watching, I think a lot of the attention at first goes to what's the tech, what's the gear? Well, how can I do lower thirds? What, and like my first like plea is, just get used to video, right? Do more Zoom calls, FaceTime with your family. And I think that when we skip that step and then we just start focusing on these gear and gadgets, that's when I think everything goes wrong because it is overwhelming. But once you get comfortable, I mean, I think about both of us. I mean, when we were, you know, 2015, 2014, um, you know, Periscope Summit, like that was 2015. Uh, 2015, like walking and talking on our phone and like getting used to, you know, even how all of this worked, but we've we've kind of built up that you know body of work, and neither one of us are perfect. You know, I'm I'm testing out some different technology here too. So I was like, I hope the audio is working, and you know some of those things. Um, but I think one of the big pieces is get used to being on video. It's not normal. It's not natural. It's uncomfortable. But guess what? Nobody's perfect. So you get used to it, and then it's like, hey, leverage this technology. I, mean, I almost feel everyone listening right now or watching is super lucky because. Five years ago, we had nothing and everything was difficult, right? Like even, even to put in like the watermark that you have like up here on, you know, above my head, right? To put that watermark on a video five years ago required coding. You know, you were uploading it into an encoder. You were passing it. Like it was a whole lot of stuff, right? I remember that. <laughs> and now And now it's just a click. And, and so it, it's beautiful that like, if you're getting on board now, like the best time to go live to go live is right now today, right? Like the next best time is tomorrow. But I, I feel like, you know, the world, we, we've been testing everything. We've been trying everything. We've been pushing, you know, all yeah. kinds of limits. And it's exciting to be where we're at now because the technology does make it easier. But I, I really think it's, you know, probably foremost important to get comfortable. And it can be doing Facebook Live interviews, Zoom calls, even just FaceTiming with your family. 
So Brian, um, we've got a lot of questions coming in from a lot of different platforms. One of the things you guys with StreamYard, and I'm not a brand ambassador for StreamYard. I have no financial, uh, Brian maybe, but I'm not. But one of, the, one of the things is everything's coming in over on my right hand side. So when you guys ask questions on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, I'm seeing all of your questions. So we're going to get to those questions. And um, But I think it's also important, Brian, that um, with the technology we have today, with everything we've all been through over the last month and a half or two months, I think it's inevitable that we accept and embrace this type of technology, okay? It's important that we understand the power of presenting for lawyers out there, a settlement offer, a mediation, an arbitration, uh, talking to clients and closing the deal so they retain your firm, using these types of tools to do just that. And by the way, before we get too far into tonight's show, Brian, um, let me just reintroduce you. I am speaking with Brian Fanzo. Brian Fanzo, I'm looking for, hang on, Brian, I'm looking for a, uh, there it is, brianfanzo.com right there. That just took one click. And you guys can do the same thing with your presentations. Brian, though, uh, is nice enough where at the end of tonight's show, he's going to be offering a complimentary 20 minute consultation to what you see tonight. You're gonna have questions tonight, okay? And you're gonna be able to reach out to Brian and get your questions answered with respect to virtual presentations or probably anything tech or digital, live video in between. With me, I'm also going to be sharing a complimentary 20 minute consultation. If you have legal, uh, or professional questions on how are you using live video, right? How are you coming across? I'm not in a suit. You know, I'm going to work out after this. Why is that okay? Why does that work on live video as opposed to be being in a suit and a tie right now? And so at the end of tonight's show, we'll let you guys know how you can take advantage of those two complimentary consultations. So Brian, we want to uh, do live video. We've got a topic. We've got a project we want to share with our audience. Um, getting comfortable being ourselves, showing our human side, being real, not being afraid to make mistakes. Okay, once my lawyer friends get over that, and let's just put that aside, what's the next thing they need to pay attention to? Yeah, so I mean, the first two rules I've always had, and I, and I see we had Steve that remembered uh, Alex Kahn from uh, Periscope Summit and Ruth from Blab. I do remember that Blab, so uh, thanks for that. And I see Claudia over on Periscope Summit too, right? Like it's like, it's it's fun to see all that kind of come together. Yeah. You know, the two rules that I've had since forever with anyone that I work with is that you have to embrace that perfection's a fairy tale and control is an illusion. You can't control the comments. Oftentimes you can't control uh, the technology. I always say the only thing you can guarantee with live video is that something will go wrong, right? And if you're okay with that and you can roll with that, um, I think that's kind of like the beauty of, uh, of where we're at. But, you know, I think the, the step you know, when you're getting over it, and I, and I did see there was a question kind of like, hey, if I only have two or three people coming in to watch, like, is it still important to go live? Like, I would actually say that's the best time, right? Like, this is the time where you can get comfortable being uncomfortable. Things can go wrong. And I will tell you, and, and, and they I, do go wrong. You can, <laughs> you can agree with this too. Like, right now, the live audience, if you are forthcoming and honest, are extremely forgiving, extremely, like if you're like, you start talking and all of a sudden people are, the comments are like, hey, we can't hear your audio. Like, hey, hold on a second and troubleshooting that audio. Like it's because oh, yeah. one of the things we have to remember is that like a majority, 90% of the people that are watching this will never press the button, will never go live, right? So like they're amazed at you being that vulnerable to even take that step. And I think sometimes we forget that, right? We're like, oh, I'm not trying to be perfect, but I don't want to like, I, my, the audience is expecting more and more often than not, the audience isn't. The audience is, is more intimidated. You know, it's kind of like for me as a speaker, I always tell people like, it's, my, it's the tip I give every, every keynote speaker is that no one comes to an event for a NASCAR crash, right? Like you go to a NASCAR race, you kind of are sing, secretly hoping there's a big crash. You go to a conference, you want that speaker's best presentation they've ever given in their entire life because you're in the audience. And if you remember the audience wants you to succeed as much as you do. It kind of takes a little bit of that like pressure off of like, okay, they're on my team. They're part of this. But to do that, you have to be very honest, right? You have to be able to, to admit when something goes wrong. Like I've, I've always said this, you know, like the most powerful phrase, and this will be probably tough for lawyers um, to say on live video is I don't know. 
If someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, saying, I don't know, let me, let me take down your name, I'll follow up with you, that adds validity to what you do know. And in this world right now, we have fake news, we have bad news, and we have corona news, right? Like we, we used to have only two things to cut through, now we have three. In that world of like all of this noise, the number one way to cut through is to be transparent and honest with your audience. And if you don't know something, admitting that you don't know it on live video actually adds validity to what you do know. And so when you're conveying you know, your truth or what you planned on doing, it's amazing how powerful that can be. But we've, we've both seen it in too many cases where you're on video, you feel like you have the stage, you have the arena, and as soon as you start making it up or acting as if you are perfect, you lose the audience. And let's face it, anyone in my opinion that is, is conveying that they're perfect, I, I immediately think they're a liar because I don't believe perfection's obtainable. So if my first impression is that you're a liar, I'm not gonna watch or consume your stuff. So I think that's a really important you know, element. It's a mindset, but it's also something to kind of embrace as you kind of learn. So let me jump in here real quick because yep. it's interesting that we're 25 minutes into the show, you guys. And I actually thought, okay, we're gonna be going through some, some tools that I know Brian will be talking about and that he uses to really create these amazing presentations. But what have we been talking about? We've been talking about the mindset, right? Yep. And Brian, in my book, okay, it's yep. broken down into three sections. The first section before I talk about social media, it's about the mindset, right? It's about giving yourself permission to make mistakes. And guess what happens when you answer a question that someone asks you, like Brian just said, for the lawyers out there, I don't know. Let me get back to you. Guess what that does? It gives you an opportunity to take that relationship offline into another level. Maybe following up with a bomb bomb email, which is a video email, you guys. It's a cool service. And all of a sudden, they get a bomb bomb with that answer, and they're looking at you in the digital eyeballs, and they're connecting. So I love giving that answer because it gives me an excuse to reach out the next day with more information. It makes me look better, but it also gives me another touch point with a potential client. For sure. And I think part of that mindset piece too is like, I mean, I know this, right? Like I'm, I always, I, my old intro used to say change evangelist, right? Like I love change. Mm. I love everything that evolves around change. And I've had a lot of change in my personal life, in my professional life. Um, and, but part of that change is that when we're forced to change, we immediately have our guard up. And unfortunately or fortunately, the entire world in the last 60 days has been forced to change, right? And so part of the reason I think for me, you know, I, I've, I've actually reviewed, um, done demos or reviewed 71 virtual event platforms, right? I saw and, a list. You did a yeah, whole list. And there's gonna be a whole report coming out on the, over the weekend. It should be finished. Um, okay. But part of that reason was I wanted to see what all of the technology was that was out there so that then I could leverage it the best for me. But what I found out was a lot of the technology is old. A lot of the technology hasn't been tested because we haven't committed to going all in with virtual as we are right now. And I think it's interesting because as much as I love that everyone's here and I've had lots of people be like, Brian, like everyone is in your perfect arena. My first thought was, oh my goodness, they're forced into this arena. So immediately our, our, like, our, our control is like, okay, I don't want to do that because it's unknown. I don't want to learn it. It's scary. And we've already been forced to work from home. We've already been forced to you know, self-isolate. Like we feel as though we've changed, been forced to change so much. Do we really have to change more? And I guess this is where, for me, it's extremely important to think about it is that no, what we do off online will never replace what we do offline. But if you are able to invest in the relationships, the time, the content, the storytelling, the conversations, it will extend your ability to do what you do offline. And in many cases right now, it's gonna, it's gonna supplement things as we kind of move forward, right? And so I think that's a real important piece as we're kind of looking at this. And so, I mean, I think the technology is a, a heck of a lot of fun, but I mean, I've, I just planned on putting out that report four weeks ago. And the reason I haven't was, I was so afraid people would start with the technology and build strategies from there. And that's so limiting. Like if you say, hey, I'm gonna build a Facebook Live strategy, your total possibility of success is Facebook Live. 
right? Like right, you've, right. if you're like, hey, I'm going to create a video strategy or a I'm going to invest in virtual experiences. Now you can redefine what success looks like. You can start creating goals and then get to the technology and the platforms. And so that's why I, as I mean, I'm a tech, I mean, like in my free time, I geek around with technology, right? Like I was in the, I was in the terminal code this morning, messing with my audio drivers on my MacBook. Like I'm that level of geeky, right? But at this, right. at, but we've spent this time talking about mindset and, you know, the understanding where all of this success looks like, because for me, the thing that scares me the most is you go live three times, you try it out. Maybe you create a webinar and you push a webinar out and it fails. Immediately, we're going to blame the technology and the thing that was different. And then we're not going to try it again. And what I'm here to say is that if you don't start with the technology and you start getting comfortable in the virtual space, you're going to be able to try webinar, live streaming, video on YouTube. You're going to start testing all of these things. And all of a sudden, one of them is going to hit home and then you double down. Then you can work on a lot of the things. But you know, the thing, the tool that you're using right now, StreamYard, I mean, I have no financial investment either. Um, like you, neither one of us. Um, I, it's my favorite in-browser tool yes, for uh, live streaming for uh, across the board, right? If you're looking for a browser-based tool that allows you to bring people in very easily, absolutely love StreamYard. And it's a great place to start, right? And, and I think as you move forward, you have to start thinking about like different things. Like, do I want to interview people or do I want to give a individual presentation? Good point. When Good I want to give an individual presentation, do I want to do slides? Do I want to screen share? Do I want to put graphics on the screen? Do I want to share it out to my website or to social media? Or do I want to have it gated so only certain people can see it? All of these things are will de help you determine which piece of software makes the most sense. And I will also say, and this is something big for speakers, right? Like, I mean, all of my speaker friends, right? Like I became an unemployed keynote speaker and a full-time virtual speaker, uh, you know, as of March 11th. And for a lot of my speaker friends, they're amazing on stage, compelling, engaging, and they're horrible on video, right? They become a robot. They, 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 they yeah. haven't figured that out, right? And so part of this whole journey ends up being, okay, what do I want to use it for? What can I get best at? And then how can I, you know, kind of switch up and add different components? So like I'm using, you know, Prezi video to add some, you know, virtual uh, overlays. I, I use, we're both using Ecamm, which you're using Ecamm for your background. I'm using Ecamm uh, to switch cameras so I can, I can show people like behind me, right? So let's go behind me real quick. And so now you're, you know, you're looking into the other camera here. Everybody um, wave at Brian. Everybody right, wave at Brian. Everybody there you go. Right. And so we're, our ability to do that is because we're able to, you know, use different, uh, you know, different camera, different technology. But I think the cool thing about this is that where we're at right now, if the technology isn't there, it's being built right now because, I mean, you showed me a pamphlet you got from uh, lawyers that are trying to take advantage of the of the COVID piece. I mean, I, I talked to the CEO of StreamYard. I actually rode a, um, uh, a a bus in San Diego at Social Media Marketing World. We went out, uh, you know, with the, the team from Quick, and we went out on a party bus and had a grand time. And we were just hanging out. It was March third, fourth, you know, talking about StreamYard, talking about live streaming. You know, and seven days later, their website's crashing because people are coming on there, right? Like. Prezi Video, which is the tool that I'm using, um, they got 55 million in uh, unique page visits last month. 55 so let me, million. All right, so let me interrupt you real quick, Brian, yep. because I'm familiar with these companies, but you mentioned Quick, and I think that is something that a lot of lawyers can be using, should be using. Maybe explain just quickly what that is and why it's such a powerful tool. And also, what is Prezi? You've mentioned it a couple of times. I know what it is, but I'm not sure everyone in my in our audience knows what it is. So Quick is so powerful because... So Quick is so powerful because, you know, in this world we're in right now, right? When we capture someone's attention, more often than not, I mean, think about it. When you're scrolling your feed, you probably don't have your AirPods in. You're probably not listening to audio, right? So the captions are important. But Captions, as in you know, SRT file, like your standard uh, captions for uh, closed caption for hearing impaired, you know, is is you know a typical font. Quick Q U I C C, so Q U I C C um, dot I O. What they allow you to do is you upload your video, and it actually burns the captions into your video. But you can add different font, you can add different colors. Yeah, there's our good friend uh, Owen Video on there doing a, a kind of a demo of it. And so you can see those words on there. 
if you've seen any of my video on any of my channels, LinkedIn or Facebook, I'm using quick for every video I make, right? I, yeah. I upload it. I would say it's about, it's about 90% correct. And I talk fast. So 90% yes, she pretty darn good, right? Like that's pretty impressive. Um, but, um, and so you can edit, you can edit the, the script and it overlays right there. Um, <laughs> See, yeah. real real talk. I know my audience, Brian, yeah. and, and Will Norm is, is, is a gifted criminal defense attorney. Will, it's good to see you. But these are powerful tools that we can start using tomorrow morning. Yep. And so when I think about it too, like this is one of the other things. A lot of this can get overwhelming because it seems like you're creating a lot of content. Here's my thing. I believe you focus on creating less content and making that content great. And then what I call it upcycling that content into different formats, right? So we're doing this interview right now. Mitch can take this interview, maybe the, his favorite three minute clip of the video. He can, he can download that, upload it to quick, add the captions on it, put that on LinkedIn and say, hey, here's a quick snippet if you guys missed the interview Brian and I had. And if you wanna watch the whole thing, jump on over to my YouTube, jump on over to my website. And if you think about it, how many videos do we see that are going in our feed? But if all of a sudden you see you know, branded captions with a color font, in, you know, in a way that kind of jumps out at you, it's, it's, you know, and this is where I look at, you know, well, and Brian, but Brian, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't something like 80% of the video that's watched on our phones, the, the volumes off or down 80% of the video that we watch. So and, that, is that true? Is that right? 95% of the video we discover, we discover without the sound on, right? Like, and I even got to a point where I was getting lazy and I would do the first 30 seconds of captions. And then I would put like, my own caption in there and said, if you haven't turned the audio on by now, you're <sighs> not interested that. enough about my content. Like I was like, cause you know, like, but you know, think about it. Like we, you're, you're sitting with your family on the couch or all watching a TV show. You're scrolling your phone, a video comes on more often than not, you don't have the volume on, on your phone. Right? So you, then you're, you're determining based on, the, the, the title, the, the piece above it, maybe your relationship with the person, or even maybe the consistency that you have, like, you know, Mitch doing this every Wednesday, right? Like mm -hmm. I would argue that you, when you're consistent, it requires a little bit less of the captioning and branding because your audience kind of almost knows what to expect when they don't know what to expect. It's now your job to have, you know, overlays, lower thirds, captions and things that you can really, you know, kind of layer on there. So that's where uh, Quick is a great one. They're a startup um, based out of uh, the Midwest. Uh, I actually met their founder before they were a video captioning software and they were an, uh, an artificial intelligence software that had no tool to leverage their tech. And they decided to do this with video and just a great team, great people um, out there. I'm I'm an ambassador for them, um, but you know, no, you know, so am I. Full disclosure, full disclosure, you guys. But this is because we really like the platform. Sure. Right. And uh, what about Prezi? Let me bring up Prezi while you tell us a little bit about that. If you don't mind, I don't want to interrupt your no. presentation, but I'm looking at the questions and a lot of people haven't heard about these companies before, Brian. So, um, and do you want to go widescreen? I can throw up. Yeah, I will. Let me, uh, let me share the Prezi. Come back. And you guys, you can do what I'm doing right now. This is not complicated stuff. I'm clicking a few buttons and sharing my screen with you and allowing Brian to talk. Yep, and, and, and Prezi, so for those that don't know, Prezi was you know the alternative to slides. It was very, I always called it like, it was snake-like. You could create graphics and that, that like kind of took you on this journey. And for me, I, I can tell you, I um, when I logged into Prezi uh, in, in March of this year, uh, <laughs> the last time I logged in was 2016. So I was a little bit overwhelmed by the platform of uh, of Prezi, but it's a it's a fun, unique way to um, present without having your typical slides. And it's very, you know, a lot of people love it, and the people that love it do all their presentations using it. Um, and then there's other people that are out there. But the the end of last year, which I didn't discover until recently, they released a video component where you can actually take these Prezi graphics and interlays and overlays and add them to your video, both recorded and live. And wow. I can tell you, I've now done 18 presentations uh, since I discovered them on March 30th. Um, and it's been the, it's probably been the number one thing for me regrowing my business is that the, it's a unique way to stand out, but it's also fun and different. And so I created one, I, I tweaked one a little bit custom here for 
uh, you guys that are watching this, we just for for Mitch's audience. So Mitch, can you throw us the in the in the side by side wide so they can see next to me? Side by side wide. So this. Yep, that's where we go. All right. Okay. So are you guys ready? So are you guys ready? So like. You know, Mitch. Wait, and I wait. Are, I, need, I need. I need a sip before we go any further on this, Brian. You always get me all jacked up. I wish I had your energy. So, Mitch and I are a little bit. You know, we're, we're uh, you know different generations. So, um, and I'm not going to hold your youth and inexperience against you, Brian. We're not. But I figured I was going to tap into you know our emotional connection, and so I figured why not? Why not do? Oh, why don't we add what the a heck? newspaper to our overlay to our graphic there? And so what we what I've done is I've actually added Prezi to the uh, the the piece here. So I'm using my my Prezi interface, and I customize this graphic before the show. So I got Mitch's uh, uh, logo from his website. I took the titles of his four most recent blog posts, and I, I went ahead and added it into this um, you know into the actual Prezi now. For those that realize that there is no green screen, you know, Mitch has a green screen showing his background. I have no green screen here. And you can see, I, I walk behind it. It's an overlay. Oh, that's um, so impressive. That's on, wow. On the screen, but even more so than that, I've, I've built, you can build in the presentation and make this very interactive. And so if I, if we were doing this in a presentation, I, I said, okay, well, you know, we're promoting the show. And so we would click into the show and say, okay, our guest is Brian Fanzo. He's talking about virtual experiences and he's talking about pressing the damn button. But what is he talking about with virtual experiences? Well, virtual experiences is these devices and it's understanding how to put ourselves in this world, right? And then all of a sudden, like, wait a second, we need to even go further. Like now we need to even go you know, deeper in there. And so you can take this into different journeys. So like, I want to help you press the damn button. And so now I have my own overlays, my own graphics in the, the interface of Prezi. And, and I can present this piece, and then I can come back out to the newspaper. And the very cool thing about this is it's built much like a presentation. So for me, and, and this is my soapbox when it comes to this solution, is that the reason that slides were slides is because it was a limitation we were provided offline, right? Like you have a giant projector screen, you need to take up this entire screen, have a background, here's your slides. Well, guess what? The real estate that we have in this world, in the virtual world is much different, right? And so why are we taking offline limitations, which is a static slide and throwing it online? Why aren't we thinking like a news broadcast? Why aren't we thinking different ways to make this happen? And so we can, you know, and this, you can go different, you know, I didn't customize down different layers, but you can go, you know, as deep as you want, you can move things around. And all of this is using just an app on my Macintosh that's connected into this software, right? So, you, so yes, Brian, what are you using to, what are you using to go from one Prezi overlay to another? Are you tapping something? Uh, are you a, snapping your arrow? I'm tapping the mouse. So I have the mouse hovered you, over the arrow. And so when I right. snapped, I had the mouse there. So I clicked at the same time as the snap. Okay. So let, let's, let's just stop for a second. So for the trial lawyers out there watching this live or recording, by the way, you guys, I'm speaking with Brian Fanzo, who is one of my go-to, you know, tech, uh, keynote speaking experts, right? Uh, and um, imagine giving an opening statement or a closing argument or trying to settle a case over a Zoom with three insurance adjusters. One's in New York, one's in Boston, and one's in LA. And you're making your point. You're, you're presenting your case. And the reason, Brian, this is so important that I just found out today, all of our cases in Orange County, California are stayed or stopped until 2021. No case management hearings, no settlement conferences, no trials. 2021, you guys, this is how I have to present my cases. When I have a million dollar demand, I can go on a Zoom like most of us and, and, and do my pitch, right? Or I can plan ahead and use the tools that Brian's sharing and, and, and give a visual, persuasive, entertaining, engaging, and memorable presentation that's going to make them move off their number and get the case settled. And, you know, and part of that, that's, that's part of what this is, right? It's, it's not only standing out, but it's getting people the curiosity and the idea of like, what's going to happen next? Like how mm. often do we, we watch anything on the computer or on social media 
and we're excited about what happens next. It does not very often, right? But like for right. the audience that's might be even just scrolling by there, and you know, for those that are probably jumping in, if you saw this in your feed, if all of a sudden you saw a floating newspaper or a 3D graphic, this is one that I created for the NSA, right? So like uh, I created this for the National Speakers Association. So like this was three different ways that we can present, right? I did virtual overlays like you would see on Sports Center. I did picture in picture slides. And then I did an interactive 3D graphic where I customized it with the branding and the logo of the sponsor of the event that I was speaking at, right? And so when you think about that little bit of effort, and I can tell you early on when I started doing these Prezi presentations, because it does take a little bit of a different approach. It was like a three hour you know, presentation uh, to build the presentation in this format. I, I can tell you that newspaper and that little customization I did was less than 30 minutes that I did for yeah. you know, this, that show. Um, the one that I'm showing you here, which was for uh, the National Speakers Association. I spoke to the entire National Speakers Association last Thursday. It was about an hour, right? And I and I created this, you know, very interactive 3D, you know, different, you know, aspects. How, you know, and for me, this is where I look at it. It's not about shiny objects for shiny objects. It's saying, I want to present information. I want to be emotionally connected with you. I want you to care. I want you to be ex as excited as I am. Like, I don't know how to turn off this passion, right? Like it's all day, every day. Brian, so, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's Mr. A Hamilton, right? And you, you got to Listen, you got to be proactive and have this passion. You do. Right? I mean, it, why not? Like, I, I, I mean, you to say that. That's a, that's a whole nother, you know, that's a whole nother soapbox, I think, from that standpoint. So, you know, like that's Prezi. And um, the Prezi, you know, I am a, a reseller for Prezi, but um, their their plan for the the one that I'm using is $19.99 a month. I'm uh, $19.99 a month. You can download, so you build the presentations. You can use. They have video templates that are very standard. I've done a couple of those. Very easy. Very nice to use. Now the ones I just showed you are their interactive presentations, and even when you click on them, it says. If you're going to do this for video, this is and you know this is an advanced format, right? Because okay. you have to change a lot, you know, and you have to know where. Like, I mean, I had for that NSA one, I, I can tell you, I had, st I had four sticky notes on the floor, and the sticky notes told me where to stand for each part of the presentation, right? So I went from sticky notes to sticky note, like because I knew the graphics. I I, I ran through it four times beforehand, but the reason I say that is twenty dollars a month. It adds a different flavor. If you've already done slides. You can actually import your slides directly in the Prezi and it'll pull your graphics and give you, hey, this is what we think you should do. But it's very drag and drop. Like I, I'm a reseller for them, but I can tell you, I don't have like skin in the game for their success. But I also can kind of validate, I've had two calls with their co-founders, six calls with their team, because I just started giving feedback because I don't really know how not to give feedback. When someone tells me they want feedback, I'm gonna give them feedback. And yeah, like, you're I not shy, you're right. not shy about that. And yeah. by the way, you guys, if you want to connect with Brian and talk to him or reach out or get links to what we're talking about, brianfanso.com is where you can start and reach out to Brian. Yeah, well, if, but, you want uh, Prezi, if you want Prezi information, I actually I, I was so sold on this. I made my own landing page. So it's brianfanzo.com slash prezi. P-R-E-Z-I. Brianfanzo.com slash prezi. It has all of my examples. It has links to a lot of those shows. I even have a, a 20 minute YouTube video where I show you how I created um, one of those overlays, all free, not gated. There's no um, you know, gate on there. And for me, part of this was like, I mean, here's the craziest thing, right? If we think about the bigger picture, on March 30th, I was Googling creating interactive presentations. I've done over 3000 live videos. I'm a full-time keynote speaker. I talk about the synergy of innovation and, you know, but at the same time, I just, I was Googling and Prezi came up and I was like, oh, I know Prezi. And I was like, you know, Prezi, I, I, those presentations take a little bit of form. I was like, you know what, maybe I should research Prezi more. And I just opened it on a second tab. And when I opened it on a second tab, the top little bar said, you know, have you tried Prezi video? And it caught my attention. And I can tell you that night I spent three hours building my very first one. I tweeted it out and immediately had two leads from people that said, oh, are you gonna create those kind of presentations for our webinar? Like, if so, I'll, you know, like, I would love to have that. And all of a sudden I was like, game on, right? And so- right. You, you did something different. You did something different than what everyone else is doing and what we as consumers expect to see. And the trial lawyers watching the show by embracing 
live video by embracing some of the platforms that Brian's talking about and incorporating them into your presentation, you're going to stand out. You're going to be different. You're going to leave a lasting impact. And if you do it right, see, Brian, there's a difference between me standing, us standing in front of a jury and giving an opening statement and just reading the statement off a, off a legal pad, right? Which is a big no-no. It's different when you're almost like a keynote speaker standing in front of the jury, speaking from the heart, being that leader in the courtroom, gaining their trust, building rapport, and making things happen. Now we need to do that on, via virtual presentations. And, I mean, and that's, I, why, and you said, that's why you're here because I'm you like, said like from a, you're, you're I mean, I'm, I'm addicted to the documentaries like since the COVID thing, especially right. for whatever reason, my connection has been to documentaries. So like every documentary on Netflix, I think I've watched, like it's my, it's my go-to and if the, the courtroom drama ones really are compelling to me. And I, and I have a notebook on my coffee table and I can tell you, I will take notes oftentimes about the documentary itself, but even the lawyers in the documentary, right? Where they, where I was watching one last night about uh, the impact of media and they were talking about the uh, New York subway vigilante and how the New York subway vigilante in the 1980s got off um, after he killed four people. And, and the lawyer was interview, interviewing the lawyer and he was talking about all of the things he was using to not only maintain attention, but to be relatable, to, to you know, connect at that emotional level, to understand where you're going but not do it to where it's obvious and i can tell you like i mean for me i work with a lot of very boring fortune 100 tech brands getting them to be compelling engaging and and understand that is very hard for lawyers you guys do it like it's what makes you great and and the barrier for so many is the is the actual screen right and so that's why for me like watch if you didn't watch the beginning of this we talked mindset we talked embracing that because when I think about a lawyers and I think about those that you know understand relatability and understand they have to know who they're talking to. You have to know, you know, did they just come back from lunch? Did they not have lunch? Are they mad because we've held them for you know 16 weeks in you know in, uh, away from their family? Like all of those things are things that you factor in as a lawyer. And I'm not even going to put these on the same level, but as a virtual present a presenter, yeah. if you're willing to embrace them. It's it's where your success lies, right? It's the it's the opposite when you if you don't, it's the, just another noise into the crazy chasm. So so Brian, we had a uh, in my mastermind in legalminds.lawyer, my global mastermind uh, last year. We had one of our new members who had never done a video did a, a a daily video challenge for a month. Okay, by day three, her videos and many of the videos of the lawyers in the group were ten times better than a lot of quote unquote experts out there because they understand all this stuff. They just yep. needed to give themselves permission to press the damn button, which is your your slogan, right? James Hux uh, mentioned he thinks it's trial that's, by media. That's, that's here's, why, here's why I'm bringing James up. James did a video, Brian, and this is this is just so good on, it was a, uh, a comedy video on class actions. He's a lawyer. I'm going to handle your class action. How many people here have had somebody in their house move something and not tell you where they put it? <laughs> We're all social distancing from home and people are moving our stuff and that's not okay. And you've got rights. Oh, I love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. Nice. So well done. Then his, a week later, he had a video come out. And I'm sharing this with everybody because I think this is what consumers need to see. A week later, he had client testimonials, clients that had hired him uh, to represent him, uh, represent them on this class action. And like he had his dog come in and his dog did a testimonial about <laughs> move, someone moved the dog's bone. Right. Just brilliant stuff. So, James, I just wanted to once again, I've already told him how impressed I am. Hey, Brian um, and Jenny Q, it's good to see you. Let me see. Press the yeah. damn button right there. Always yeah. good to see Jenny Q. Hey, Brian, for um, I've got one camera and I'm using StreamYard, you guys. But Brian, talk to us a little bit about using multiple cameras, what technology or uh, parts you use to touch and switch things around. Because I know there's some components out there that you use that maybe some of our audience members would like to try out. Yeah, and so I'm, uh, you know, I'm using um, Ecamm Live, which is I, we both are using that um, to, you know, you're doing the background. I'm using that to switch cameras. Right. I can tell you, I have DSLR. I have all the most expensive gear you've ever seen. What you're seeing here is a. Up, oh, we just lost your audio. Hang on. 
You just, yeah, we just muted it. I muted myself when I picked up my microphone. How about we're that? We're good. Yeah. Yep. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Um, so I have a, a microphone on my desk. I have a Logitech Brio web camera, and then I have another uh, a web camera. Now I do have like a DSLR that I've done some stuff with, but I'm using two web cameras plugged into a 2015 MacBook Pro. Nothing, nothing as wild as you could, you know, you would think. And using the Ecamm software, so that software downloads onto your computer. And, and what I love about Ecamm is it's much more like a broadcast encoder where you can add overlays and transitions and scenes and a lot of those things. What's up, Vincent? Vincent's one of my longest social media friends. Yeah, it's good to we see you, had, Vincent. We actually started at the data center together. Uh, really? One different apart. He was the head of social media. I was the uh, technology evangelist back in uh, Phoenix. So uh, Everybody let's... follow Vincent. Vincent's world-class, doing great stuff at Arizona State. He works with Arizona State. Uh, um, there there State you blew media. it right there. You blew it. Oh, I know. He, know, he, I know. he knows I'm a wildcat. He You're knows a wildcat, I'm an Arizona wildcat, you know. but we'll, we'll continue. But so, so the, you know, there's lots of those things. Now, I am using the um, – you had asked before what the uh, piece of technology I was using to switch yeah. Prezi. So I was using a, my mouse there, but there's a tool called uh, Stream Deck. And so what Stream Deck has is- So hold it, hold it up a little longer so everyone can see it. Stream Deck, you guys. Yeah, okay, so that's I can one of the things I was all of these keys. And so the keys have different cameras on them. So if I want to switch between my cameras, I'm simply clicking the button there on the camera, on the, on the piece. If I want to add, you know, picture in picture, I can add- like my own graphic overlay, which you guys see right there above my head. Yeah, yeah. All of that, I programmed it. It's about 150 bucks. Very easy to set up. You get to pick the logo, the colors. Um, what I really like about it is it's there's you don't plug anything into it. It's it controls your software. So like there's a button that says put up a timer. It can say switch to your website on full screen. A lot of those things. And so when you start thinking about giving virtual presentations. One of the things that I think is most important is setting up your environment to where you're most comfortable. And I, and I think that's extremely, so like for me, standing, like I've tried to do presentations sitting down and I get this uncomfortable like twitching and like moving back, it just, it doesn't fit me, right? So like standing is important to me. So I have a standing desk that I use. I have my web camera on my monitor there. I'm using, you know, some, um, some a lighting kit but for me, this is when you're when you start getting comfortable. It's setting up your environment that sits you best, right, Mitch? The way that you you're using the virtual background, which gives you that kind of freedom. You know, and you've had. I, well, you know, I'm adapt, but I, but I'm adopting to my environment. I like to stand when I'm speaking to you, Brian. Yeah. But because I'm at home and where I am right now, and I'm not in the downstairs office, I'm upstairs in the bonus room. There are all types of things that go into what the world's seeing. Okay. And it's okay. It's not ideal, but it's good enough. Yeah, and, I, and I think it's important to think about that too. Like, because I feel like I love like Mitch, you sitting down the way that you're doing it. It's a casual conversation, which is the emotion that you're trying to generate here. Right. Like, and, and for, is, yeah. and I think that's, you know, like even the, the multiple cameras, like I, I've said this for a while, like I figured out how to hook up four cameras to my, my machine. I had it all set up and I asked myself, what was each camera for? And all of a sudden I started realizing, well, I don't need four. Three is actually great. Three can give me, one can give me a bird's eye and then one can give me a more intimate experience. And so with everything that we're doing in virtual and digital, there should be a reason and a strategy for why you're using it, right? And so, you know, like even for, for me, for the presentation I just gave a little while ago, I presented for 30 minutes this way. I put a two minute video, I played a two minute video using Ecamm, kind of like you did for the intro. And then when they came back, I was sitting in my chair and I had a black background and it was time for Q and A. And I wanted the emo I wanted the connection to be, okay, now jump in and have a conversation with me. Like I'm not, I'm no longer screaming at you and, and projecting. And you know, it's much like in the courtroom, right? Like where you stand, the difference between standing behind next to your, you know, whoever you're defending versus coming up, you know, face to face or your distance from the judge. And these are things, if you think about it virtually, it's, that's the difference, right? Like, how do we make those emotional connections? And, and weirdly, we just think about the screen and video and we're like, oh, that's what we have. But if you really want to take this to the next level, and this is where I'm a big believer, I'm all in, is great people that are doing great things, that understand the emotional connections that are available in the human work, you know, in humanity. If you're willing to kind of integrate that into what you're doing with video and virtual, 
I, I truly do believe it's life changing. And I, and I will say this, yeah. like, I don't think I put it out there before, but like, like my true soapbox is what I call digital empathy, right? Like I believe if we invest and leverage technology and innovation to do the things that we shouldn't be doing as people, we as humans should be able to do more better things at scale and we should be less lonely. Suicide rates should go down. We should have people feel more connected. And I know right now it doesn't feel that way because this is really weird and odd. And I mean, I'm living by myself. I was divorced a couple of years ago. My, I have my kids every other weekend. My partner, Jennifer, lives in Atlanta. I haven't seen her since March 6th. Um, and so like, I understand there's, for me saying that, it's kind of like, well, that's nice to hear. But what I think of is that, think about all of the things. I just heard Twitter just told their employees they could work from home for forever. Google told their employees they can work from home through 2021. Part of this comes down to how do we together allow each of us to do what we do best, let technology scale and amplify, because I'm tired of bad people doing bad stuff and yeah. the noise of the faking it till you make it being all we care about. And I, and I truly do believe if the good people that are watching this invest in it, take their time and learn it, it's going to help move the needle and make this all better. So that's, that's kind of the, the fun part of all this whole, you know, where we're going. I agree. I think being proactive and embracing what's happening and, and using technology and recognizing that we have the opportunity to create change and, and to keep moving forward. And some of us have been on live video for years and we already understood the power of live video, <laughs> right? And it's happening right now. Um, Brian, real quick, I know we're at, we're at the top of the hour. I don't know. Are you, do you have a hard exit or well, do I have I'm, a couple I'm minutes? All good. We're, because, good. because some of the questions I'm seeing here are, Look, here's the thing. If you're presenting a, a million dollar settlement demand using a Zoom, you guys, or you're engaging with a judge and opposing counsel, and you're using some kind of live video presentation, adding the components that Brian's talking about into the equation, um, I think is critically important for all the reasons we've already talked about. Brian, when you held up that device, and, and let's just take a step back, and there's a yep. reality check here. Before going live, I told Brian, I said, look, I've got a couple of things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna press a couple of buttons and I hope the video works. I hope I don't disconnect you. It can be overwhelming to keep track of all this stuff. Uh, overlays, camera angles, maybe one or two different cameras. Talk to us a little bit about having an assistant or a third party, whether they're in the office or they're virtually located someplace else to help us administer these presentations, is that an option? If so, what should we be looking for to, to give the best result that we wanna, you know, the best without, presentation we wanna give? Without question, I think part of this comes down to understanding what's possible and then figuring out what works best for you, right? And, okay. and so there are remote um, live uh, broadcasters, remote live production. Um, one of our good friends, uh, Stephanie Liu, uh, I think is one of the best that's out there. She is, I've actually recommended her like three different calls just in the last two days. Um, which which is really nice. You can work with them, build out the overlays and the presentation. And okay. as you're presenting, they can bring in, switch screens, switch cameras. You know, using a tool like Ecamm actually allows a third party, someone else to actually control your video. Um, for those that don't know, in Zoom, they just recently even enabled in Zoom, where as a Zoom admin, I can let anyone else control my video, um, which is interesting, right? Like okay. we talked a little bit about security there, but so the, the, that piece of it is important as well. The other thing is, and I can tell you, this is one of my biggest secrets, and I didn't used to tell people, I now do, is right. that when you're doing, especially live, and you have all these comments, and if you're doing it by yourself, I did a lot of shows where I wasn't interviewing someone, I was you know, talking, and so uh, Kristen, uh, she's known as Tink, uh, was on my team, and she would have a live Google Doc, and so she would be watching, and she would take the questions and put it in the Google Doc, and I would have the Google Doc literally like right here underneath the screen. And I would see the question there and I'd say, oh yeah. So I'm gonna go back to this question on minute three. And people were like, Brian, yeah. how'd you remember all these questions? And I didn't, I had a community manager. She was also replying in the chat, like Brian's not gonna talk about that right now, but he has a blog post here, right? Like finding that support. And I also think, I mean, and this is, the, this is the other hard truth is I've spent more time practicing virtual than I ever have for any presentation I give on stage. Really? Uh, you know, really? I, mean, I mean, I did 66 gigs last year, right? 
I, I've done, I, you know, more. And part of it is getting the flow, figuring out what works and what doesn't work, but also having a fail safe, right? Like, so I have my microphone right here, but I also have headphones that are sitting on my desk that are, if all of a sudden that the microphone stops working or I knock it off the table, my headphones plug in it, put in my ears, we're good to go, right? Backup and systems. It, and, and, it, and it's, it's not, you know, I hate, I'm not one that's risk adverse. I'm much more like I ask for forgiveness, not permission. But right. in this world, it's about what are the variables I can eliminate either by having someone else help me or what are the things that are like my must can't, you know, sacrifice, right? Like, and, and so like, even when, when we got on here, you know, Mitch, you and I jumped in the green room. Most people would be like, oh yeah, you guys were hanging out talking. I was like, Mitch, let me test this out. I'm trying out this audio. I'm looking at this. I was, you know, put my headphone in to, to listen to myself. And so, yes, it can feel a little bit overwhelming, but there are people that can help. There are people that can support. The other thing about it is repetition. I can tell you the more times that you press that damn button, each time it gets easier. And each time you feel less like, oh my goodness, like I picked up my microphone, the audio cut out, right? Like, you're like, hey, Brian, the audio went out. I plugged it back in, clicked the button. No big deal. But, like it was, it, it was, yeah. you know, you, you, and I always say like, I had hired uh, 30 employees when I worked for the US government. Um, and my first 30 employees were older than I was, right? So I had 32 employees eventually. Uh, the first 30 were older because I was working in cybersecurity. And the number one thing that I was hiring for as the young kid with a you know top secret uh, security clearance was I would always say, I just wanna know, can you roll with the punches? And I can tell you for a lot of them are like, well, of course, like, you know, I live in the world. I'm like, no, like, I mean, like, I'm gonna ship you 25 laptops to Kuwait. You're gonna arrive for a four day class in Kuwait and the laptops are stuck in customs. What are you gonna do? And I can, I'm using that as a scenario because it's what happened to me twice. And, <laughs> and what I ended up doing was I went around and rented local machines from a local Kuwait I went to a FedEx, spent $2,000 printing out the books that were supposed to be digitally. We had five machines and I built out ways that we could roll with it. And I look at like the world we're in right now, like it's not about perfection. It's not about feeling like every day is good. Like as passionate and as happy as I can tell you, there are moments in every day over the last, you know, 54 days or whatever this has been that I'm down or, you know, like I, I'll go in the bathroom and like, I don't have toilet paper. I'm like, how are we out of toilet paper? And then you're like, <laughs> how am I social distancing? You're like, you're like, yeah, it's, it's not about like that piece. But I, I think for me, it's rolling with the punches. And then, I mean, this is the this is the reason I love what I do. And it's the reason, you know, Mitch and you and I connected. Like, I love great people doing great things, being rewarded for being great. I'm tired of people selling unicorns and rainbows and bad people doing bad things, getting all of the attention, right? And these yeah. technology, this software, Bad people can use it and do bad things. Like there's no technology in the world that will stop bad people from doing bad things or stupid people from doing stupid things, right? Like Facebook living while you're driving, like, gee, right, like, come on. Right, now. right. Like, you know, it's like, like anything else. It's like anything else, you know? Yeah. You just have to you just have to uh, be willing to put in the time. And it's, look, I know you're a hockey player and the first yeah. time you skated out on the ice and it, what is it called, a slap shot? Is that yeah. when you, right, slap shot? I'm sure it wasn't easy the first time you did it, balancing on your skates and swinging the stick, right? But the more you did it, the better you got. And pretty soon it became second nature. But Stephen, um, once again, let me kind of just channel this back to some of the lawyers. You guys, what we're talking about is if you remember trying cases and the first time you used a PowerPoint or the first time you used a video, okay? Because there's a time, Brian, when we were not allowed, to, we didn't use that kind of stuff in court, right? And I'll, and usually you have an assistant sitting next to you who's helping you with the stuff while you're standing up giving your opening statement or your closing argument. They're clicking through, they're clicking the play. Yep. Same thing with what Brian's talking about. With these virtual presentations, you can set yourself up, yes, Stephen, with Zoom and other platforms and, and have somebody else work, you know, work through these presentations while you're talking and while you're speaking and while you're using your hands, they're clicking through. You've practiced, you have a script, you yep. have a game plan, especially better. on big cases, you better have a game plan, right, Brian? And that's why I like, so Prezi video works perfectly with Zoom and it enables like a virtual camera um, and Ecamm does that as well. That's one of the limitations of StreamYard, the technology we're using right now. StreamYard doesn't push to Zoom or 
go to webinar or webinar platform, but Ecamm Live, the tool that we're both yeah. using as well, um, as well as Prezi Video. It, it, there's literally a button that says connect to video conferencing. You connect, you open your Zoom window, it pops up on the bottom and says, do you want to enable your Prezi Video? You hit yes and you now have that overlay. It, it is that simple. And so if Zoom is that primary one, I can tell you that's the one that I'm using a lot right now. It's it's not the best. It's the one that we kind of are defaulting towards in many cases, but both Ecamm and Prezi use um, work very well with Zoom. You know, what's interesting is also, I think the other the other aspect, in fact, I'm clicking you guys over in StreamYard, you know, just showing people what's going on here. And it's just a matter of setting up some things. You type it in, you click, and this is what happens. Look, here's the thing with Zoom, the courts, opposing counsel, everyone's comfortable and understands Zoom. They're, because they're familiar with it, they'll go ahead and agree to do a Zoom call with you, right? So there's other factors involved with what we're doing. Also, when Brian mentioned I'm down at the beach uh, shooting a video, maybe I'm running, the endorphins kick in and I have an idea, I'll just grab my phone and shoot a quick video. It's not the end of the world if something doesn't look good or if I screw up with a sentence structure or something like that, I don't really care. If you're doing a presentation on a $10 million settlement, then then prepare and bring experts in to help you get ready. People like Brian, right, who or and his team of experts who can come in and help you make that good first impression yep. because you're not going to have a second opportunity. And, well, and, and part of it's enabling you to do what you do best, right? I think like, exactly. the, the technology is here and we have the options. But it's how do you set yourself up for the best chance for success, right? And, and a lot of it, too, I can tell you, especially in Zoom, there's a lot of features in Zoom. I've probably spent in the last three weeks maybe 15 hours in Zoom with fellow speakers trying out every functionality that ever exists. Mm -hmm. And we were like, have you ever done breakout rooms at five minutes and randomly set them up? We're like, no. Five of us got on. We each had like three devices. We logged into Zoom, so there was like, 40 devices checked in, there was only five of us. And we tried out all of these things. And part of that reason is when my clients come to me and ask me like, what are the capabilities or how can I make this happen? I let them know what these are, what, what their options are. And then we try them out and test them and figure out, okay, should you be enabling that or should someone else be helping you with that, right? Or is, is it too important for you to be connected to where if you're gonna put in a lower or like, you know, I mean, even on here, right? Like Mitch is bringing up my website. Mitch is bringing up the things that, that are coming on screen. It's not, I'm not doing it because I'm the guest, he's feeding it up to me, right? So like, there's one of those things too that you wanna get comfortable. And I also think when you're thinking about Zoom, there's an expectation or I will not even say an expectation. There's a very low bar when it comes to what is expected on Zoom. If you are willing to invest a little bit more time to try things out, to work with somebody, to get better at even your delivery on, on your cadence, how you're using your nonverbal cues, where your eye contact is, those little things can make all of the difference in the world. It, it might not even need a lower third or a second camera. It could simply just be some of these nuances. And, you know, and for me, it's funny, I, I was just working with, um, you know, the CMO, I was telling you before, the CMO of a, a very large Fortune 100 company. And I was working with her and it was changing her background and getting her comfortable with how she looked on camera. And then right. it was, I kept telling her, I was like, when you talk to me, you come in, but on video, you stay here. I was like, let's get you to move. And we changed up the chair she sat in. She told me the next day, every single person felt different how she was engaging on video, right? And like, it was simply for her, changing up. We took a picture off the back wall, which she was, you know, uh, I think a little self-conscious about. And then we ch changed the chair she was sitting in and it transformed a Fortune 100 CMO's impression on Zoom. And I think those are the things that, you know, when you're working at, and like, I love it. Like, I really enjoy coaching, you know, uh, you know, those that are doing great things to be compelling on here because it's usually a tweak or something you haven't thought of or Oh, I didn't even think about like, why am I not sitting with the light from the outside window there? I should use that because, you know, it's much more relaxing or I have more open, you know, like little things that go on. So it's, you know, testing, tweaking and kind of figuring out how all that works. So once you get the audio down, the lighting down, you understand some of the basics in live video and presentations. And then when you add to that formula, because, you know, a lot of people in my audience are pretty bright people. They're going to pick up on this stuff real fast. 
here's what they're not going to understand. They're not going to understand all of the overlays, all of the different tools that Brian shared with you guys tonight. And that's what's going to separate you 60 days out, 90 days out. Um, listen, at the top of the hour, Brian, we talked about uh, you're nice enough to offer uh, a free 20 yeah. minute consultation, right? And here's what I'd like to do. Do you have a particular uh, hashtag uh, that you use on social? Is there something that you? I mean, press the damn button is usually my. my all, right, all right. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. So if you want to get a complimentary uh, 20 minutes with Brian to talk about anything that we talked about tonight, maybe maybe even hockey, too. I'm sure he'll. he'll, of course. he'll, he'll yeah. I mean, whatever. Um hashtag press the damn button, but we're not done. Okay. This is the first person that shares this out. Let's do this on Twitter. Uh, hashtag press the damn button. Brian, B-R-I-A-N. So hashtag press the damn button, Brian. The first person that tweets that out is going to get uh, uh, a complimentary 20 minute consultation with Brian. Same with me. If you guys have, if you're a lawyer and you're like, geez, I'm not part of Mitch's Legal Minds Mastermind. I have questions from tonight's show. I want to touch brain, uh, touch base with Mitch and pick his brain. Same thing with me. If you guys hashtag Mitch Jackson live, hashtag Mitch Jackson live. First person that does that, uh, complimentary consultation. My pleasure. I love, Brian knows I love this stuff. We both yeah. do. And that's why we're here tonight. And that's why we're sharing with you. Um, Brian, let's do this. Let me click and bring up your banner. People want to get in touch with you and stay in contact. It's brianfanzo.com. Yeah. Uh, just in case somebody is listening to the audio later, working out, whatever, next week, next month, uh, maybe you could share, uh, you know, not only Brian Fanzo, but some other places that people can touch base with you. Sure. Yeah. So, and I, and I saw in the comments, someone mentioned about a standing desk. The standing see. desk I'm using, I am like the biggest fan in the world. No, nothing. Uh, I've ever, I've actually kickstarted them at the beginning uh, when they started. It's called Autonomous AI. The desk is $500 and it is remote controlled with five different program buttons. So I have one that's live video, one that's tall, one that's short. And then one that I have my daughters in the room, like, and it's four mm -hmm. buttons. It, it moves up and down, plugs in. It, they were, they, I kickstarted them uh, 2014. They now have all kinds of different options. Um, but I have all of my gear up on Amazon on that link. So if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash isocialfans, I actually have different kits. So I have virtual presentation kit, work from home kit, um, upgrading from basic Zoom kits. So if you're right now using your camera in your laptop and you don't want to spend that much money, I show you a ring light, a web camera, and an external microphone, which is probably under 500 for all three, that will transform your impression on there. Um, as far as social media. that again, media, trans, trans, you're, you're right about that. I mean, these little, these items can change the whole experience on a virtual presentation. And even if, even if you think of just the, the basics, right? It's they yeah. see that you invest how your appearance is virtually, they immediately have a different opinion. They're, and Mitch and I are using the exact same microphone. There you go. Yeah, I'm just talking to my web, my webcam. I'm actually yep. focusing on a USB mic. Sorry about that. No, yeah. So, so, um, and so on social, I'm iSocialFans, which is the name of my company on every channel. I'm a big believer in consistency there. Of course, my website, brianfanzo.com. Um, I am doing, I have a new YouTube channel. I decided to start over um, from scratch on YouTube um, only because I wanted to commit a YouTube channel to only virtual experience type content. So presentation okay. tips, uh, you know, how do I use Prezi? Why I use Ecamm? I did a whole video on my top five favorite live streaming tools. I shared it out. So the short link for that is press the damn button dot video. So if you just in your browser, open up a second tab, type in press the damn button dot video, it'll switch you over to my YouTube channel um, that I've created on, you know, just for, virtual presentations. Uh, you know, I'm committed to two new videos at least a week up there for free for everyone there. Look at that. Mitch, see added it in the lower third. Very nicely done. That's it. See how, so, yeah, fast, just, see how easy that is? You guys, if I can do it, and I've never been accused of being the brightest bulb in the lamp, if I can do it, you guys can do this. So press the damn button dot video, brianfanzo.com. And then I'll share Brian. Uh, for those of you that want the links uh, to the equipment, to the resources that Brian had up a little bit earlier. I'll share that in the show notes on each of the major platforms so you can click and get this stuff so you can do what Brian and I are doing right now on a Wednesday night. Brian, my friend, this has been a pleasure. I wanna toast you right now. Tip, 
right there. Cheers. Thank you, friend. And uh, everyone, thank you for joining us. We've got um, Jack Newton, Cleo, uh, uh, CEO and founder next week. Cleo Brian is a case management program that we all use in the cloud. It's awesome. Jack wrote a new book and he's going to be our guest. So everyone, please tune in next week. Say hi to Jack, bring your questions. But between now and then, connect with Brian. Take advantage. You know what, Brian? I want everyone to tag us in their videos, in their presentations, yes. so we can see what everyone's doing, right? Every time you press the damn button, I will not be, I love seeing people trying new things. And I'm always a big believer in, you know, testing and tweaking and, you know, and so yeah, tag us in it. Let us know uh, the different things you're doing, you know, and, and the gear thing, because I'm on with lawyers, a uh, full disclosure, it is an Amazon affiliate um, page. I do get like three cents for every $300 or something you, you spend, but I can tell you, I, I spent a lot of time customizing those kits just so that it's what I use. It might not be the greatest thing. It might not, it's not the most expensive. It's what I use. And if you have something better, or maybe you are curious about something that I haven't used, I am also one that does not believe I know everything. I am a hundred percent. Okay. Admitting I don't know something. So if you discovered something, maybe you're listening to the replay of this and you're like, why didn't Brian bring that up? Reach out to me, let me know, because I can tell you I love discovering new things and I sure, you know, surely don't know everything that's out there. Well, so uh, you know, Mitch, thanks for having me on. This was a heck of a lot of fun. But it's my pleasure. But real talk, real quick, Brian. The reality is there are 10 to 20 different ways to do everything we've talked about. Exactly. And I, what I see professionals doing is they they research all 20 ways, but they don't do any of them. Yep. So everyone right. can listen, everyone can learn, we can all take notes. Very few people take action. Very few. Take and a platform and go for few, it. Take a platform do. and go for it, you guys. Take action, execute. That's what's going to separate you from everyone else in town. Brian, thank you. I'm always here for you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Take care. Make it a masterpiece. Good night, everybody. Cheers.